The station manager and an employee were busy with their paperwork until they could hear the sound of children and women crying. It got louder and louder until it became screaming and other loud noises were heard too. The employee heard the sound of people panicking and he went out to investigate the disturbance. Nobody was found to be there, but going back in time, a dreadful event occurred on the location of the station. 173 people were crushed to death in the worst civilian disaster of the Second World War. Only 24 victims were men, the rest were women and children. Before the station was opened on the 4th of December 1946, the area was used as an air raid shelter for the residents. On the 3rd of March 1943, after British media reported a heavy raid on Berlin two nights prior, the air raid civil defence siren sounded at 8.17pm, triggering a heavy flow of people down to the blacked out staircase from the street. A middle aged woman and a child fell over, three steps up from the base and others fell around them, and they became tangled in an unmovable mass and they struggled with nearly 300 people. Some managed to get free, but 173, mostly women and children, were crushed and asphyxiated. 60 others were taken to hospitals with injuries. News of the disaster was held for 36 hours and reporting was censored, giving to the rise of allegations of a cover-up. Among the reports, which never ran, was fired by one Eric Linden of the Daily Mail, who was witness to the event. The story which was reported instead that had been a direct hit by a German bomb. So if you've watched my videos before, you would have seen I'd featured Dover Castle. It's been on the site for about a thousand years. And here is an employee to tell you the history of it. Well, the Great Tower itself, the main keep of the castle, um, was constructed between 1180 and about 1188-89. Um, for Henry II, um, we don't know very much about the architect, but it was someone who was called uh, Morris the Engineer. Um, it uh, only took about six or seven years to, to uh, construct at that time uh, and cost around about £7,000, which was astronomic at the end of the 12th century. Uh, that was in fact the entire revenues of uh, Norfolk, Suffolk and Kent for that period of time. Uh, the oldest part of the castle um, shows the 2,000 years of history that the castle uh, shows today. Um, it's the remains of an Iron Age hill settlement that was here long before the castle was here and long before there was much down in the valley in the way of Dover. Um, there have been several archaeological excavations in that area and uh, uh, the remains of those people have been found there. Uh, that's also the site of the Roman Pharos, uh, a Roman building reputed to be the tallest uh, Roman building in the United Kingdom, uh, and a lighthouse, one of a chain of lighthouses that was here in Kent uh, and in Nord de Calais in Boulogne. In the Second World War, uh, one of the most important uh, people who stayed here at the castle was Vice Admiral Sir Bertram Ramsey, He's the man who uh, masterminded the evacuation of the Allied troops from Dunkirk in May and June of 1940. Uh, he spent some time here and uh, he was also um, host to Churchill who also spent time at Dover Castle during that period. Now you're familiar with the history, allow me to tell you the ghost stories. A group of visitors had entered the site's repeater station in Hellfire Corner and the property steward was looking over them before he started his speech. He noticed a lady looking on intently into the repeater station. She suddenly had an expression of shock and fell to her knee. She said she saw a man in naval uniform fiddling with the equipment. He started to walk towards the group. He walked through the barrier and through the woman. He turned right out of the repeater station and into the rest of the tunnel complex. The sightings this woman saw has also been seen by other people through the years. Another tour and another property steward. But the sightings of paranormal activity happened yet again in the repeater station. A father, 
and daughter were noticed standing off to the side of the group a little, and it appeared they were in communication with somebody the guide couldn't see. The father looked on with an expression of interest, whereas his daughter looked on with an expression of fear. All of a sudden, the father turned away and ran out of the repeater station, turning left from where they had come just before. The property steward made a light-hearted joke about the repeater station being the most haunted room in the complex, and the father responded with, I know, and I've just seen the ghost. The property steward dismissed what he had said, but noticed the girl was still looking quite distressed. She took them up to the gift shop and made an account of what had been witnessed, and had become convinced that they had seen something. And now for my accounts of what I have seen. As you may know, I have visited Dover Castle many times over the years, and I have experienced my own paranormal phenomena. Before I had even visited, Dover Castle had made itself known to me in my dreams. These started around November 2009, and ended around May 2010. The first dream was like no other I'd had in the past. I went to sleep. There seemed to be some time of nothingness, and then the feeling of being woken up suddenly hit me. I slowly began to wake, opening my eyes in a dimly lit room and laying on a bed that felt unfamiliar to my own. I could hear the sound like thunder from above. I looked over to my bedside table to the left of me and saw things that looked out of place from my own table. I saw a small square flip calendar facing me. I read the date which stated it was the 15th of April 1942, but I went to bed in November 2009. This woke me up, and I sat up and looked forward. There was a mirror propped up against the wall on the floor. My reflection wasn't too clear, but I could see I was wearing something blue. I felt a hand on my shoulder turned around to see a woman urging me to follow her. She too had the same colour uniform on. I stood up, and she led me out of the room, down a corridor which had walls of stone and partially lined with tin. I could see other people, but I noticed particularly a woman on the right hand side, holding a clipboard and she was crying. To my left was a man and a woman talking, also wearing the same colour as I. We went up a small incline to a room which didn't go anywhere else. It was filled with wooden crates, stacked too high. I turned around to face the woman. She leant in close and whispered into my ear. Everything's going to be okay. She pulled back, started walking backwards out the way we arrived, and turned and ran down the corridor. I went to follow, but the roof caved in on me. I woke up for real. Back in the room, in the bed, and the time era I knew too well. These dreams of being in the Second World War continued for about six months after this, and only ever repeating once. This is something I've told only a few people since it happened near eight years ago, but it was something that will always stay with me. When I visited the castle around August 2010, the place seemed all too familiar, and it triggered memories of dreams that I had had. The dance that I shared with the woman that woke me up on the first dream, just outside the keep on a patch of grass, and the Roman pharos behind us. The dull moonlight reflecting off the Dover Strait, with a few vessels bobbing on the sea. But it wasn't all like this. The nervousness I feel today when I hear that air raid siren. The pounding in my chest, a sensation made worse when it's a museum exhibit replicating a raid. It really put into perspective what people at the time went through. We hear of this British stiff upper lip, but believe me, the fear was still there. This is a video of my visit to Dover Castle, and I took a photo in an older part of the tunnel complex that was laid sieged in 1215. If you look closely, you can see a shadowy figure in the distance. This was on a normal working day and children were at school so the castle was fairly quiet in terms of visitors on that particular day. Well that wraps up my video, I hope you have enjoyed the stories I've shared with you, and I hope you have a fantastic Halloween, and I will catch you in the next video.